What's good everybody, Yugi Fine Foy, I'm here with another Dark Profile for you guys. It's gonna be Dark Profile Mayhem this week, so I do apologize uh, in advance. But we're gonna do some tell nights! I, I just got a lot of things I need to take care of, but we're gonna do some tell nights this time. Um, the deck is definitely a little bit different than what you saw in the replays yesterday, because I'm using Dragon stuff. Uh, I just had some different random things in the deck at that point in time. They kind of see what worked and what didn't work. And I think I have a pretty solid build. Of course, this is subject to change in the future, especially as more Satellite Knight monsters or cards in general come out to play in future sets. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, first up, we have three Satellite Knight Deneb, three Altair, three Vega, three Sham, and one Unokali. I don't know. <laughs> don't know why they named it that, but okay. Where that is named. So each of the of, of these guys get effects of when they are summoned. The Neb, when he is summoned, you can add a Satellite Knight from your deck to that except for himself. When Altair is summoned, you can special summon one Talon Knight monster in your graveyard except for Altair and and the face up defense position. But you cannot attack with other monsters except for Satel for except for Talon Knight monsters. So it is a nice little drawback to the deck, but it's not really a big drawback because it says uh, for the rest of the turn. So basically, you can attack and then use this effect. That's a nice loophole. I love loopholes like that. It makes it like, a lot more better because I read it wrong for the entire time. Like I thought I couldn't attack first, but I misread the card. So it's a lot, a lot more better than I originally thought. So really good thing there. Vega, just, you know, when summoned, you can special another satellite, uh, another satellite monster from your hand, except for Vega. Good combinations with Altair. When Sham is summoned, you can dish out 1,000 damage to your opponent. Easy burn damage. I've won a couple of games because of Sham. Then, of course, we have uh, one of him, you know, he, I not, cannot even try to pronounce his name. Pretty much when he summons, uh, you can send one talent monster from your deck to the graveyard except for himself. So it adds, you know, more deck dynamic capabilities and an extra Telenite target for Deneb and Vega as well as Altair. So it's kind of reason I'm burning him. Uh, as more come out, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more better Telenites, he's probably out there. He's going to be taken out as future support, support comes out. Next, we're playing a Zephyros Steel Elite because we do have some continuous trap cards that we can easily just recycle with Zephyros, so it's really nice to have. And honest, since everything's a light card, pretty much, and we have two Tank Goldfish, I could have gone for Goblinburg, but I like Tank Goldfish better because of the fact that it does have 2,000 offense. Yes, Goblinburg is searchable by Rhoda, but I like having that 2,000 defense, so if I need to kind of set something first turn, not really much, I can set the Goldfish and just have him sit there, pretty much. So it's a really good card on the deck, in my opinion. It opens up a lot more plays. And you know, he might be replaced later on with more, you know, uh, an actual Telenite that, you know, because the Vega does what Template does, but, you know, I like having 10, 10 Goldfish because it adds more kind of spamming capabilities to the deck. Anyway, spells have one reinforcement from the army. We have two warriors during a life. This card is amazing in this deck. This is such a good card. I really wouldn't re recommend playing three, but two, one to two is actually pretty good. You're gonna run through your cards a lot. You're going to. The deck does not have any recyclability in terms of its archetype. There are cards you can run to help recycle, but it has no recyclability. So you really want to have the ability to abuse all tear to his most maximal potential and this allows you to do that. There are cards there are cards you can use recyclability, which I will go over in the extra deck for stuff you can use to recycle your deck, but this is a really good card to have in this deck. We have three upstart goblins because well it's upstart it sure soul charge is a thing, but I need to get to my combo pieces faster and duality is not really gonna cut it because I do special summon you will be special summoning a lot in this deck. It's kind of how boxers are. When you're in a situation in boxers, you don't really want to top deck duality. You kind of want to top deck something that you can use to special summon with. It's the same thing with with the Tell Knight. You kind of don't want to use duality because of the fact that in sticky situations, you have to special summon to get out of them. And duality is not going to jack shit. Hell, when you first turn, you're probably going to be special summoning maybe like an Omega or something. Dark, then we have Dark Hole, double MST, and then double Lance. Lance is great protection, of course, so it's a good card. The chapter you have three celestial factors. This is such an amazing card. The counter trap of counter. This is so good. 
Like, when your opponent activates a spell trap or monster uh, effect, you can send one face of Talented Monster you control to the graveyard and negate the activation. And if you do, destroy it, then draw one card. Free draw power! There's more deck dating! It has a lot of deck dating. It's really nice. I'm also playing one Celestial Aura. I didn't say I in the duel video I might take it out, but I decided to drop it from 2 to 1. It's a really nice card. It's a nice ultimate offering, but I think anything more than one is kind of clunky and clunky and doesn't really serve a good purpose. It does allow you to basically really overextend and really spam the field like No Tomorrow is really, really helpful. And it's a nice way to basically say, hey, I can summon this Telenite and just do shenanigans during my opponent's battle phase and protect myself, so it's a good card, and it's continuous trapper, so to get bounce back with Zephyros, to have some nice combinations there. Then we have a bottomless, torrential, solemn, which I almost forgot about, compulse, double mirror force, and then two Phoenix chains, to gain effects, stop attacks, and Zephyros targets to for reusing them. So the next deck we have two Delta. Um, I'm playing two because I feel two is only only two should be necessary. You can play three, it does work at three, but there's other cards I wanted to try out in the deck and play in the extra deck. Cause fifteen card limit! Thank you, Konami. I wish it was I still wish it was twenty because that would help out so much in terms of a lot of decks. But requires three level four monsters, which is really nice. But I do wish the Tell Knights would get and exceed that required two level four monsters, because that would help them out so much. I mean it will. But when you normal or special summon a monster while this card has exceed materials, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. Very nice. Once per turn, you can attach one material from this card, then target one card in the field, destroy that target. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one Telonite monster from your hand or deck. Very good deck deck capabilities. Um, kind of stinks it, it doesn't say from graveyard, because that would make him even more better, like special summon the Nev from Grave. Or Sham from Grave and just like search or dish out thousand damage. That'd be really freaking cool. But it's a really, really powerful card in my opinion. And the fact that it's generic really makes it cool, uh, especially for me, enough to definitely want running in a lot of decks that can easily make uh, rank 4, so got 3 level 4, like gadgets or Goku Goes Zombies and stuff like that. Then it goes to the Evil Swarm Outer Boro. It's a pretty standard card for decks like this, so you know, why not? We're also playing the new guy, Castell the Avian Sky Blaster. This is, in my opinion, is like almost auto state, pretty much auto staple in extra decks now. It requires two level four monsters, and you can only use one Castell the Avian Sky Blaster effect per turn, and only once that turn. Attach one material from this card to target one face of monster on the field. That monster, change that monster face down defense position. Detach two materials from this card to target one other face of card. Shovel the target into the deck. Very, very, very handy card. This is really good. Good answer for things like 101, and it's just so, so powerful. It really is. It's really, really good. And I like the fact that it looks like a glad beast. Like, doesn't it not look like a gladiator beast? It does. Look at the outfit it's wearing. It looks like a fucking glad. Then, of course, you have Amarel. You want to play Amarel on this deck. This is a deck, kind of like gadgets are. You really, really have to play this card. Because if you don't, you're going to run out of resources extremely fast, and you're going to pretty much be a fish out of water. It's not going to end well for you. So you need the Emerald. I also rec I'll actually recommend playing two if you want to, if you can, because this is a really, really good card for the deck, because you run out of resources fast, and you want to recycle them. This is a very key card for the extra deck, and you're always, nine out of ten times, going to go into them, especially in a long, lengthy duel. You're going to go into this one and have at least multiples. You have a Cancellar Mega. Everything's light, so why not? And it's just a screwed back row. We have a Diamond Down Rule for easy popping. The Extinction Knight, because, you know, it's Extinction Knight. Gaga Ga Cowboy. Free burn damage. She doesn't like that. Number 101, of course. We have the Black Ship of Corn. We have a Star of Leech Pilot Domino times 2. Very good effect negation and free draws. We have a number 39 Utopia, um, I would recommend taking it out for a second MRL, which is not what I'm probably going to do, because I never really go into 39, but I go into MRL almost all the time. Then, of course, we have number 86, Heroic Champion. Uh, however say that, I can't really say the fucking name, but, yeah, this thing is a beast. You can easily bring it out in the deck, and you can easily get a lot of materials on it. I've had times where I've had four, I've even had five materials on this thing because of this deck. And it's just like so good. 
So really not that hard to bring out, you know, normally you get, normally, you get, usually the amount you get is usually about three materials, that's about it. You can sometimes get four if you're lucky, but five is a rarity. If you can get five going into this thing and just wreck fate, it's awesome. But anyway, this is my Satel Knight deck profile. Give me your thoughts on that in the comment section below. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!